Um, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for joining us today for this session of Autodesk Virtual Academy. Um, my name is Christina. I'll be um, sifting through any questions that you may have. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Jim and Luke from Autodesk. They will be leading today's session. Um, thank you guys so much for coming on and um, representing Autodesk. So I'll hand it over to you guys. Yeah, um, hi, everyone. My name is Jim Byrne. I'm in product marketing here at Autodesk for Inventor and Product Design and Manufacturing Collection. Um, actually, I started out in technical marketing, so you might have heard my voice in a few videos like with Factory Design Utilities. And I've been here for about eight years. Um, and in case you're wondering, I, I live and work on the west side of Michigan. Luke, how about yourself? Yeah, thank you uh, for having us uh, again. And uh, so I'm Luke Mahelsik. I'm a technical marketing manager here at Autodesk. And so essentially whatever Jim needs me to make for him, uh, I make for him. Uh, I've been here now for coming up on 11 years and with the same focus as Jim. Uh, I really focus in on uh, anything related to Inventor, the product design and manufacturing collection and uh, I think that's just about it for me. I am also uh, East Coast uh, in Pittsburgh for uh, for the record, in case anybody would ever want to reach out. And uh, I think that's about it. So uh, let's get it started, Jim. Um, welcome, everyone, to this webinar, Top 5 Workflows for 2D and 3D Designs. You have Luke and I presenting today. Um, and so both of us have used a, a lot of different software applications over the years. And like many of you on this call, uh, the first real CAD application that I used was AutoCAD. And uh, I'm, I, I feel like I do this a lot, but I'm going to date myself again and, and tell you that I used AutoCAD for machine design about 25 years ago. And uh, if, if I'm being honest, <clears throat> um, I didn't really see the, the benefit of 3D at that time. Um, I mean, 2D drawings got the job done, right? Um, and so that was really around the time where parametric design was just becoming an option, this, this predated inventor. Um, and then of course, a few, a few years later, I got it, uh, where you, you had the ability to design full scale machines. Um, it, it was something that was not only practical, but I, I noticed that it opened the door to possibilities that I, I never considered. Um, so those are the possibilities that Luke and I want to talk about today. So, so Jim, before we talk about those possibilities, let's see which one of us is older. Which was the <laughs> first version of AutoCAD you used? See if I have you beat. Do you remember? Ooh, AutoCAD 10. Mine was, I believe, 7. 7? I didn't even yeah. know there was a 7. Amazing. I think it was really old at the time. I, I, I think 10 was the current version, but uh, clearly I'm older than you are. So. <laughs> you know, and if I'm being honest, that was even before... I started using it like in production and machine design and detailing. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it was something that I really enjoyed using, uh, especially for machine design. Uh, and so um, as we as we speak with customers and, and you may be one of them that we speak to, these are some of the things that we hear from you. Uh, for example, will 3D help with product quality? Um, is, is this going to take a lot of training before everyone's up to speed in it? Or what happens to all of our current data inside of AutoCAD? Is it going to improve business? Now, if you have these questions or if you have questions like it, then I hope that we can address some of those today. Um, now, there's, there's several workflows for working in both 2D AutoCAD and 3D, um, or you know, in Inventor and 3D. And Luke and I are going to, we're, we're covering three main themes, uh, starting with moving 2D data over to 3D, um, using them together for the same project, for example, electrical and factory layout design. And we're also going to discuss some of the benefits of having your design data in 3D. Now, uh, you, you probably have asked yourself, how, how easy is it really to create 3D models from 2D? Well, it's probably easier than you think if you haven't seen it yet or tried it. That's something that Luke is going to show. Uh, you know, not only can you use your existing DWG files to do it, 
the 3D model remains in sync with changes to the DWG later if you choose. Um, this is a good option, not just for associativity, but you know your measurements are going to be spot on. And um, you know that, that's of course if your 2D drawing is accurate and scaled properly. Um, now, the, the beauty of creating your manufacturing drawings is you're not forced to use um, Inventor to make them. If you're comfortable using AutoCAD, uh, or if you have particular standards that are suitable in AutoCAD, then keep on using it. Um, it doesn't matter which one you use, uh, they're both going to save D DWG files and, and reference the 3D model for design changes. So traditionally, some of you know that um, electrical and mechanical design uh, can be accomplished in, in silos, or that's the way it is. Um, you know, because of that, communication can seem like this manual part of the process. Um, however, uh, AutoCAD and Inventor enables your electrical and mechanical portions of the design to remain in sync with each other. So designers can work together virtually um, instead of uh, you know, instead of against each other when determining things like space requirements. And so for decades, um, you know, we were talking about dating, our, dating ourselves, but for decades, uh, AutoCAD has been the, the tool of choice for designing factory layouts. And we recommend that you continue to use it, except we can make it even better. Uh, where you, you can see what happens when you subscribe to the, the product design and manufacturing collection, uh, because AutoCAD then includes tools to do other things, like analyze material flow and energy consumption. And then with just a click of a button, you can view your layout in 3D inside of Inventor. And this is where you can get an instant bill of material or a bill of equipment. Uh, you can check for interferences between your equipment and the components of the building. So this is pretty amazing stuff. Uh, we actually spoke about it a lot in, in our previous webinar. Uh, so you, sh you should check, uh, check out the recording if that's something you're interested in. And so now Luke is going to show you uh, what these workflows look like. All righty, thank you, Jim. Uh, so first of all, uh, apparently I got busted. Uh, Steve Wyndham, I think you might be on the call. Uh, you are correct. Uh, it, it wasn't seven. It was. It was definitely a pre-10. I. It was so long ago. I think I was in high school when I was using it. So this was like er, whatever was early '90s was whenever I was using this. So uh, I just threw seven out so that I could beat Jim. So uh, thank you for keeping us honest. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, Mark. Thank you for for letting me know that uh, one of our customers called us out. That's awesome. Um, thank you for paying attention too. So the the first thing I want to talk about is some of the different ways that you can reuse your AutoCAD data because the the reality is you know we we have this idea that we have to choose one or the other. And what I'm hoping I show here is you can kind of pick and choose when you want to do this and the particular workflow that you want to do. So this is just a real kind of simple example, front top right view drawn traditionally in AutoCAD model space. And I'm just going to kind of scroll through this video uh, quickly. What we can do is we can take these front top and right side views and we can repurpose them. And, and in this example, we just went through and essentially built those planes. So this is essentially an isometric uh, composition of those individual views in Inventor. And the cool thing that you can do inside of Inventor, and, and this might be a workflow you wanna use, or maybe you don't, it's, it's kind of your choice. We just wanna show you all the options. Uh, what you can do is you can reuse the geometry in the view to choose where you want to extrude. So what I can do is I can actually choose to extrude that in the other direction, choosing that distance so it knows to go back that far. I chose those two points. And then I can, again, choose those distances to choose how much material I want to cut away since we're actually building a 3D solid. And I can do that with the holes. I can do that with different features. I can add fillets. Uh, I can add chamfers. 
so all kinds of ways to reuse that data really quickly. Now, this might not be the most ideal solution. Uh, a lot of you who are perhaps already using Inventor, this, this probably isn't the most ideal way. It might be a quick way to get the beginning of uh, a model done. But what you might be thinking about is maybe you have really specific features. So in this example, uh, we're gonna take a completed detailed drawing and maybe there's a block in here that I need to reuse because it's a typical feature that we use over and over and over again. So again, inside of AutoCAD, we're just gonna issue the block command. We're gonna choose what material we're working with. So basically I want this slot to be um, a block inside of Inventor. So just using traditional you know, AutoCAD tools, I'll create a block, I'll choose my insertion points, uh, I'll convert it to a block. And then the cool thing is when I copy this, this is really important, um, this second piece inside of Inventor. So those of you that might be doing this, this is a tip you may not have seen before. So when you go to insert this block into a new sketch, probably the most important thing that most people miss here is whenever they go to paste this, you wanna right click and hit paste options. This is then gonna allow you to paste this. It's gonna constrain the endpoints, you can adjust the units, you can apply parametric constraints uh, while you're reusing uh, that geometry. Once you bring that in, you can then locate it using traditional uh, dimensions inside of Inventor, which are parametric. I can create some extrudes. I can reuse that sketch, let's say on the opposite side of this. I wanna do another extrude the other direction. Now, if I back up just a hair, these get stored inside of a block library in Inventor. And because it's associative back to that original block, if I actually edit that block, Maybe I stretch it to be a little bit smaller. My blocks automatically update. And then any geometry that I create is gonna automatically update. So a really quick way to reuse a portion of a drawing without having to bring in the entire drawing. So this next one is really gonna be different ways to reuse um, the entire drawing. So uh, in this example, we're gonna open up an AutoCAD file and this time we're going to insert. So the, the, the way we talk about this is critical. Uh, we're gonna insert an AutoCAD drawing into uh, this sketch. We can choose which layers we wanna bring over. Obviously we don't need the title block. We maybe don't need anything else other than the hidden lines and the visible lines. Um, we can choose to constrain our endpoints, add geometric constraints. And now we can actually go through and create our geometry again, really quickly with the insert command. Now, the challenge with the insert command is it just brings that geometry over um, without any type of associativity back to AutoCAD. So we can add our chamfers and do whatever we want uh, with this particular model. But maybe your AutoCAD drawing you want to be the source of, I'll say truth, that's where the dimensions change. So I'll do that exact same thing. I'll start a new drawing or new part file in Inventor, except this time I'm going to import a DWG file from AutoCAD. And when I do the import, you're gonna see a really important dialog box pop up. I'll choose where I want it. And it's gonna tell me that this is now a DWG underlay and it's associative back to the AutoCAD file. So since that's associative back to the AutoCAD file, I can go through, make my changes, create my extrusions, add my fillets, do whatever I need to do to this particular piece of geometry. And now, because AutoCAD is my source of truth, let's say I stretch this and I go from 572 millimeters and maybe I drop that down to 542. When I get back into Inventor, I'll see a little lightning bolt update in the upper left. And now my geometry is gonna automatically update because that DWG underlay automatically updated. So again, a really easy way to reuse uh, that geometry. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about, and I'm gonna do this one live. So uh, knock on wood, everything's gonna work well. Uh, so inside of Inventor, and just to prove it's live, I'm gonna rotate this left and right. Um, and this is about the difference between DWGs and IDWs. 
So when you create a drawing of a 3D model inside of Inventor, uh, you essentially have uh, two options. So the first one is to create a standard DWG, and one is an IDW. Uh, the IDW is a proprietary unique file format just for Inventor. You, you can't view that really anywhere else. But the DWG file is just like it sounds. It's, a, it's an AutoCAD drawing file. And Jim and I just had a conversation about this this morning, and there's really no reason not to always use DWG when you're creating these. Um, it's gonna give you more flexibility down the road to be able to share these drawings with AutoCAD users. Perhaps they wanna do some of the detailing in AutoCAD, uh, and um, it's gonna allow you to uh, make sure that that link stays associative and not everybody on your team has to be running Inventor per se. So you can choose whichever one you want to do. In this case, I'm going to do a DWG, and I, I have one uh, ready to go. So inside of my DWG file, I'm just going to create a base view, and I'm going to create uh, a top view and a right side view and an isometric view. And let's say I don't like that orientation. I can kind of quickly change that and get the exact orientation I want. And then the cool part is, you know, if you had to do anything like this in AutoCAD, just generating those views, you'd be there a while. So the ability to take these drawings and create all of those views literally in seconds um, is, is one of the biggest benefits of doing that drawing creation inside of Inventor, uh, if you can. So what I'm gonna do now is save this and let you see what this looks like inside of AutoCAD. So I'm just gonna do a quick save. I'm gonna put this somewhere where I can find it. That works. I know it's outside my project location. Don't yell at me, everybody. It's just easy to find. So now inside of AutoCAD, what I can do is I can actually open up that particular file and what you're gonna notice is it's only in paper space. So when I go over to model space, I don't have anything. So this is an example, this workflow is whenever you just want to be sharing your DWG files from Inventor to AutoCAD for detailing because you could very easily come in here and add in any kind of dimensions uh, that you would wanna add to do some additional detailing, uh, whatever you would want to do to this um, for documentation purposes. And it's going to stay associative. So um, the other way to do this, and I'll go back into Inventor real quick and we'll wrap this up, is let's say I want to do a, uh, an editable DWG. So there is a slight difference between an Inventor DWG and an AutoCAD DWG. And, and here's the difference. I just showed you in AutoCAD, um, it's, it's all in paper space. But if I take this file and I do an export and I can export this as a DWG file, this is gonna create an editable DWG file. So I can go through, choose how I wanna export this, how I want the scaling to happen, all the sheets, if it happens to be a multi-sheet, if you had an AutoCAD template that you wanted to use for this, you could. And I'll just finish. I'll throw this in the same location and HCA, HCAD. And I'll save that. And then the big difference here is inside of AutoCAD now, whenever I open up that particular file, this now becomes an editable DWG file. You can actually, there's no association back to it. Uh, you can make adjustments to this. So if you have someone that needs to edit this down the road, maybe you're sending this to someone to do some nesting or some cam or maybe some flat patterning, uh, whatever it might be, but this is an editable DWG file in AutoCAD. All righty, let's bring the presentation back. And then uh, the last thing I wanna talk about, and Jim mentioned this, I'm just gonna show this quickly. Uh, this is that idea of, using factory and this is not a factory design utilities webinar but we do want to talk about the power uh, that you have there so this is a quick example of laying out your 2d geometry inside of autocad so you can go through and use your asset browser because um, most people i think whenever they are building 
uh, factories and factory lines, they're thinking in 2D. And the great thing is we can quickly turn those assets into three dimensional assets. And then the second example you see here is I essentially have a bunch of polylines inside of AutoCAD that I'm just gonna say, I want them to be uh, conveyor layouts. And then those conveyor layouts automatically get turned into 3D geometry. And the cool thing is, this is associative either direction. I can edit this geometry back inside AutoCAD or I can edit the geometry inside of Inventor. And again, that real benefit of doing your factory planning uh, at that level. And I'm gonna pass things back over to Jim. Okay, thanks Luke. Um, so when, um, when making the decision to, to move over to 3D, um, automation is, is usually the thing that comes to everyone's mind. And the reason why is because the, um, the parameters and the formulas that you create, now they're driving your design intent, uh, where you can actually build some intelligence into the model. So when it's time to change it, it behaves as you would expect it to. Um, and then all of your 2D manufacturing drawings are going to remain up to date uh, from the, the 3D model. So most everyone understands this if they've seen how Inventor works. Um, but then, uh, but then we can you can take automation even further with uh, with iLogic technology. Uh, so many of you have parts or assemblies that they vary in size um, or they contain different components. Well, instead of redrawing the next one or a new version of it, you can establish some of those engineering rules and then create a form that, that anyone with access to Inventor uh, can use to, to drive that design. Um, and then there's the, the Autodesk Forge platform, which is beyond the scope of this webinar, but it enables you to take that form, for, for example, if you look at the one on this slide, you can place it on the web so anyone with an internet connection can configure new products. Um, so there's a lot packed into this slide. Uh, most engineers understand the immediate benefits um, of, of 3D models like better collaboration or interference detection and assembly, some of the things that we spoke about. Um, but what about the, the downstream benefits like virtual testing where you can run all kinds of studies on your design, you know, not just linear static studies for stress and deflection results, but you can run thermal or cyclic loading for fatigue or vibration or check for buckling, um, many other types of, of tests and results like that. Um, you can also uh, check for tolerance stack up issues or let the software suggest a nest for flat parts or two and a half to five axis cam and advanced rendering capabilities. Um, all these tools that we're talking about run right inside of Inventor. So there's no need to learn or navigate a different, app, uh, you know, like a different application interface to use them. All righty, so uh, I'm gonna do another uh, live-ish demonstration and we're gonna talk about um, automation, and I, I was looking at some of the initial questions that were coming in and uh, the fact that we have lots of folks primarily using AutoCAD. I do wanna talk about just parametric design really briefly, and then we'll get into some, some iLogic workflows and then some downstream things uh, that Jim had mentioned. But probably one of the, the coolest pieces of uh, using a 3D tool and one of the big benefits of a 3D tool is the idea that you can actually build some intelligence. So, you know, as you see me sketching here, this is centered right to left, top to bottom. And what I can do is I can come in here and just add a dimension and tell it that it's 12 inches. Um, but what I did ahead of time was I created some parameters and this is really where I'll say the, the meat and potatoes of Inventor happens is all of these parameters, every single thing that you do inside of Inventor 
has a parameter associated with it. And you can define them ahead of time if you like, if you kind of know what your design is going to do. And, and most of us do. There's a purpose for the design. There's some maybe limitations or restrictions that you're working within. So in this example, uh, I just created, you know, width, height, depth, whole offset, whole diameter, just a handful of parameters ahead of time. You can see the values there. And what I can really easily do is when I go to dimension this now, rather than just saying it's uh, 12 inches, I can come in here and I can reference that parameter and say, um, this is actually going to be the width. And this dimension here is actually going to be uh, the height. And I could type the value in. If I wanted to type the value in, I could pull from the list uh, like I just showed you. So now, whenever I go to extrude this, you're going to see that I can actually switch this again. If it's always going to be symmetrical, I can build that intelligence in ahead of time. And I can actually type in my value of width. And it's going to know to be that specific width. Now, the cool thing here is I can easily, you know, start to add in some additional, again, intelligent features. You know, let's say I'm going to create a hole and the size of that hole, I, again, I can actually choose from my parameter list and I'm going to go uh, with hole diameter and I'm going to dimension it from this edge and I'm going to tell it to be uh, the whole offset and I'll dimension it from that edge and I'm going to tell that to also be uh, the whole offset. And I forgot to, and this is the beauty of 3D, uh, I forgot to tell it to go all the way through and I can tell that to go all the way through and then we can build further intelligence by just mirroring things. So I can say this hole is always going to be mirrored uh, about some of these origin planes. Um, so whenever I go to mirror this, I'm going to mirror it about this particular plane, and you'll see the preview pop up, and then I can mirror the mirror. So I will mirror that mirror. I'll pick the plane that I want to mirror about. It's going to be that one right there. And here's where the benefit really comes in. If I say, you know what, I, this, this piece really needs to be different, uh, I can actually go to my parameters, and I can say, you know what, this is really going to be uh, 22 inches. It's going to automatically update. And my depth um, is actually going to be, and I think I did one of my parameters wrong, my extrusion, I didn't do it correct. So let me edit that feature. Uh, and this is actually going to be depth. I did that wrong. There we go. Uh, so now whenever I edit my parameters, I can really easily say, oh, my depth is actually going to be six inches. Uh, my height is actually going to be 10 inches. My whole offsets uh, are going to change to 2 inches. And my whole diameters actually need to be 2.5 inches. So really easy to build design intent and intelligence uh, into your model. So uh, just want to get that really quick high level for the 50% of you plus that uh, are primarily using um, AutoCAD. Uh, the other half of you, you might be doing some parameters, but now let's say you want to take it to the next level and you want to talk about uh, taking that and putting it into iLogic. I'm not going to go through everything that was required to build this, but what iLogic is going to allow you to do is you can build in intelligence, not just in your part files, but at the assembly file level. So what I can do is you can see I have the number of stations. Let's say that I want four stations. You're going to see they all get crowded on top of one another. But let's say I want the total angle of the stations to be 180 degrees. And what that's doing there in the background is it's actually building. You can see my table is adjusting. My, my bill of materials is updating. The holes and patterns of my components are automatically adjusting based off of what I'm doing here. So I can adjust my pattern to three of these. And then I can actually just use my slider and adjust my slider to have that move. You know, maybe I only want that to be somewhere around 120 degrees. So a really easy way to take all that parametric design intelligence and put it into uh, an iLogic form to do even further uh, automation. And let's go 
back to the presentation. And, and then this is where that benefit happens. So you've created your intelligent models, you've created uh, perhaps your uh, iLogic models to quickly iterate on different designs. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at taking that and not only creating just some pretty simple 2D drawings, but we can do things like whole charts. It's gonna automatically grab our materials and our properties. Uh, a lot of our notes can automatically populate. Once we do some perhaps automatic dimensioning, we can then take not just the plate itself, but we can actually go to the assembly level and look at the bill of materials that are automatically created of these components. Again, this happens automatically. We don't fill any of this in. It, it builds as we create our components. And then we can take that and create exploded views. We can create fabrication lists, bill of materials, do some automatic uh, ballooning of our components. Um, and then this is where additional downstream benefit as part of that product design and manufacturing collection come in. And the one I'm gonna show you is Nashtran. I happen to like Nashtran, it's pretty easy to show off and for folks to understand. And in this example, we wanna take that frame and we're just gonna just decide to load this frame up. We're gonna put a load on these top surfaces that we're anticipating. Maybe it's a maximum, maybe we want this to fail. We wanna see where the failure point is so we can make adjustments. We can define our mesh. We can refine this and adjust it as much as we like. And then we can actually generate that simulation and then we can go through and look at displacement stress strain and this is just a simple you know static uh, uh stress analysis and as jim said we have tons of different options uh that we can do and then the one that i was hoping would get a little more attention but it was still pretty good 30 percent of you uh, are looking into tolerance analysis whether you realize it or not tolerance analysis is a part of the collection and what this is gonna allow you to do is all of that intelligence that you've built into your individual models, you can create tolerance stack ups and understand based off of the holes, the clearances that you're defining, the minimum, the maximums, uh, how that is going to perform from a fabrication and machining standpoint, because you don't wanna make every tolerance super tight and take your machining costs up. There might be some leeway that you can make adjustments to reduce your machining costs. Maybe your fabrication time can increase. Uh, so a really great way to, uh, again, leverage that data you've created, all that intelligence for downstream benefit. All righty, uh, before we continue, Jim has a, a couple additional things he wants to share, uh, but I really wanna just do a really quick wrap up. Uh, and I know this was kind of a, a fast uh, webinar. We, we like to keep these fast and you can always ask us for more details later. We appreciate that. Um, but one of the first things is this idea that you have to choose between AutoCAD and Inventor. And I mentioned it at the beginning. The reality is you don't have to choose. Uh, you can choose to work with the right tool at the right time based off of whatever your workflows are right now. You might be purely 2D and you're just thinking about 3D. You might be in the middle of a transition. So it's whatever your design needs are. Uh, we talked about how we can easily reuse that AutoCAD data inside of Inventor. Uh, you don't have to start with the blank sketch inside of Inventor. Reuse all that rich 2D data that you've built over the years uh, to jumpstart uh, your move to 3D. Uh, we also talk about the flexibility that your organization needs when it comes to creating this documentation. You may not be ready to move all of your designers and engineers over to Inventor, but you may have a few that can and you can keep individuals inside of AutoCAD for detailing purposes and documentation purposes. Uh, so lots and lots of flexibility. Uh, we didn't get a chance to show it, but we did talk about uh, AutoCAD electrical, uh, this ability to create integrated electrical mechanical designs that stay in sync between AutoCAD uh, and Inventor. And then finally, if you're doing anything with factory equipment or factory layout, uh, if you haven't looked at factory design utilities, uh, that ability to lay it out in 2D and then realize it in 3D is really something you're gonna wanna take a look at. Um, and finally, we talked about this benefit of 3D in those last couple videos uh, and uh, demos that I showed you really talk to that flexibility of parametric modeling and the speed at which you can create geometry. 
Uh, we talked about creating those automated workflows with iLogic to get those same but different types of designs out quicker uh, than you ever could inside uh, of 2D. And the cool thing about 3D modeling is your drawing and documentations are essentially, I'm, I hate to use the word free because I know you're all paying for the software, but they're there. You generate front, top, right, isometric views. You're really just annotating. And it can't be anything but accurate from the 3D model because it's associative. Uh, and then once you have all those models created, all that downstream benefit we just talked about. Uh, simulation, tolerance, cam, nesting, rendering. And, and whether you realize it or not, if you have the product design and manufacturing collection, you have access to Fusion 360. Uh, so if you were you wanted to check out doing some cloud-based uh, design collaboration and manufacturing workflows, that's all available to you. Uh, again, whenever you're kind of thinking about making that move to 3D and kind of how far you want to go with that all the way to Fusion 360 for cloud collaboration and manufacturing. And I'm gonna pass it back to Jim uh, to wrap us up and then to get to some Q&A. Okay, all right. Uh, great wrap up, Luke. Um, so in, in most of the presentation that we did today, we, we were focused on just two products mainly, right? AutoCAD and Inventor. Uh, we did touch on a, a few downstream applications uh, that work inside of Inventor. Luke was demonstrating them. Um, now, both AutoCAD and Inventor are included in a single subscription of the product design and manufacturing collection. Um, it actually costs less to get the collection than it does to subscribe to AutoCAD and Inventor separately. You know, plus, you have all those downstream tools that, uh, that you just saw for simulation or CAM or factory. Um, so the, the purpose of it is to include everything that you need beyond design uh, to better prepare your, your products for manufacturing. Um, it's for your entire product development process. Um, taking a look at a customer, I, I had met JJ Johnson, you can see his quote on this slide, and Ryan Rittenhouse at Autodesk University a couple of years ago. And they're a perfect example of a company that used AutoCAD. They realized the benefits of design and inventor specifically for using iLogic to, to quickly reconfigure staircase designs for new customers. Um, if, the, if this story is something you're interested in, by the way, there's a full length article uh, that you can find on the Inventor website, uh, or you could also run a quick search for Autodesk and VRail. Uh, really enjoy working with these guys. Great. Um, so these are some resources based on the presentation. Um, and I'd like to hand it back over to Jim and Luke to answer any questions that may have come up during the session. And yeah, take it from there. So do we want to start in order, Jim? Where would we like to start? Yeah, sure. We could start with, um, there was a great sheet metal question that, uh, that you were just answering a moment ago. Yeah, so uh, so Jared, thank you for the uh, the question. And the answer is definitely yes. Um, you know, pretty much any two D um, geometry you have in AutoCAD, um, you can reuse it a couple of different ways. But I, I'm I'm imagining that you might have uh, a multi view drawing of a piece of sheet metal that you might want to use. And there's a couple of ways you could do that. You could bring in the view that has the most detail let's say, that way you don't have to worry about punching all the holes and doing all the different things to it. Um, and then you could add different bends, uh, or if it was a really complicated bend in a single profile, you could bring in that profile and then use um, the flatten command. That way, there, there's a whole bunch of different ways you could do it, but it, it's really just a matter of determining like which one's gonna get you to the end result the quickest. If, if it's a pretty simple one, it might be, grab the flattest view with the most detail. If you have a really complicated bend that you don't want to draw, I'd probably choose that view and then add information to that is what I would probably do. Um, but you can definitely reuse it. Um, and, and this is like a second question um, about DWG underlays. You could also do that two different ways. You could bring it in as an underlay and project geometry and put it on top of it and keep it associative back to that original um, 
like I had demonstrated earlier, uh, or you could just bring the geometry in as essentially a copy, just something to reference inside of Inventor to kind of get your drawing started and, and not be associative. So it really all depends on um, the workflow. So, uh, so just keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking of that one too, Luke, and the sheet metal is one of the more challenging ones, right? Because you don't necessarily use all of the geometry, like the bends, for example, you know, some, you, you don't, of course, include those uh, when you're you know, redrawing or modeling up some of those features, um, you know, but yeah, it's, it, you can certainly leverage it to some extent. Yep. The, uh, you know, there's, there's another question now that we're speaking of underlays. Um, someone had asked if, you know, we showed how you can use it in parts, but can you use it in assemblies too? And, uh, you know, I, I think, Luke, the answer to this one is yes, that you can use this in assembly documents. Um, in fact, one of the things that I heard or, you know, uh, is that you could use the underlay in an assembly document to even drive the location of some of the parts that are in your assemblies. So that, you know, that way, if you want to, you know, move anything around, you can just simply update the sketch. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, and you could do that in, in AutoCAD too. And of course it would drive the, uh, the sketch inside of Inventor. Yeah, and you can actually have multiple DWG underlays. I, I, I mm -hmm. think, it's, so depending on what version of Inventor you're running. So I, I'm fairly certain that is a, a new-ish, functionality with assembly level uh, DWG uh, underlay and the multi DWG underlay. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but I think that that's somewhere in like the, the 2020 release, somewhere in that neighborhood. So depending on yep. what version of Inventor you're using, if, you, if, you're, if you're older than that, it might not be there, but it's definitely in the current releases, so. Yeah, that's, that is a good point um, because there, and there's another question too, and what, what release you have to have in order to use some of this. And um, it actually goes all the way back to 2016. Um, and like Luke said, you, there's been a lot of enhancements to DWG underlay since then. But um, if you are on, for example, 2017 still, 2018, you have this, uh, this technology available to you. Yeah. Uh, I did see there was a question from uh, Justin. I'm not sure if he's uh, still on the line or not. Uh, and it's about uh, an easy way to get a PDF into Inventor without using AutoCAD. And I'll be honest, I haven't done that in a, in a while. And I, I, I'm fairly certain um, that, that there isn't a direct way right now. I did, I did a quick search as we were just uh, looking at the questions. And, and I do think the easiest way is still using AutoCAD. I'll, I'll make sure to do a little more research on that and uh, I'll make sure that uh, we, we get a, a definitive answer. But I, I just did some looking and I, I don't think there's an easy way to get one in directly. Uh, I could be wrong, um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get a definitive answer on yeah, that. Yeah, I think you're right. It's just the, the path um, I'm not sure of. It's, <laughs> that's, that's the thing that we need to find out. Uh, any other questions? Uh, there's one last question. And then if there's any more folks, uh, I, I do see we still have quite a few folks on the line. Um, feel free to continue to ask questions while we're here. Uh, and this one is, uh, will I have access to the existing AutoCAD layers after opening the DWG inside of Inventor? Uh, and the answer is yes. So whether you realize it or not, um, you can see the layer structure inside of Inventor. If you haven't been in Inventor a lot and messed with it, um, you can see that layer structure and turn, like let's say you accidentally brought over stuff that you didn't want to bring. Um, you can just control the layer visibility uh, inside of Inventor as well. So just keep that in mind. It's, you, know, you have all that capability. Uh, and it's not like once it gets there, it's, it's static. You can still control that. So keep that in mind. Yeah. And I, I was just thinking, Luke, too, if I, um, I think that Adelina, Adelina, excuse me, Adelina is going to show the Kativ email for support. Um, we can also, you, you can also email us directly, too, if you'd like, for, for example, to send us the sheet metal part um, that uh, was in question of how to use that in DWG underlay. Uh, you know, feel free to um, send us those documents if, or, or even the PDF if you have questions on those. Um, it's no secret what Luke and I's 
email addresses are. Um, it's our first and last name with a period in between at autodesk.com. Um, or like I said, uh, Kativ's support email address will come up as well. I'm guessing the support folks at Kativ are probably a little better equipped than, yeah. <laughs> than yeah. you and I are, Jim, yeah. to stay in. Uh, so uh, I, I, I don't see any uh, additional questions uh, popping in there. So uh, I don't know if we're ready to, to call this. Yeah. And uh, if there's any additional resources you wanted to share with them. Um, no, I don't have any additional resources. Thank you guys so much for joining us today and helping us host. And thank you guys all that came and tuned in. Um, this will be um, posted on YouTube in about a week. So thank you all so much. You guys all have a great day. Bye now. Thank you.